Hi guys, it's CryptoBurp. Adrian speaking. Welcome to today's Friday webinar. And well, fresh, fresh news. Bitcoin is back over $40,000 and we are testing the main long-term level. The main long-term level, which actually if broken, will bring many longer-term implications. We will have another attempt of break through break above the three-month long, most important crucial level for the entire three-month long correction. Is this the final breakout? Is this the final reversal finally confirmed? Well, this and uh, and more about the stock industry as well, uh, support perhaps uh, for, for Bitcoin, whether or, not, whether or not it actually supports it and leads the breakout. We're going to actually give it a proper discussion uh, throughout today's session. If you guys are ready, make sure you stay tuned. We are going there right in a moment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let me know very quick, guys, where you are, uh, where you're writing from. It's good, good to see you. There are some uh, some Polish people. Hi. Um, yeah, this is this is pretty pretty wild day, pretty wild week. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you know, have been experiencing the roller coaster, top to the bottom, bottom to the top. Uh, I can see whales logging in. Uh, Checking in Italy, checking in Zurich, beautiful Turkey. Super Jan Czekański, dzięki, widać, słuchać, super. Boulder, Colorado, beautiful. Polska, Shimano, Istanbul, beautiful. To, hi to all my beautiful uh, Turkish people out there. Siłowni Niwawa, Piona. London listening, Poznań, New York, Istanbul, again, South Africa, okay. Lots of beautiful, beautiful countries out there. Uh, I'm so, so, so happy that you guys are tuning in. Like I said, you know, this this topic, you know, of course, could be, well, each of these mentions over the Bitcoin, over these talks alone, because uh, what's been going on, it's pretty wild the past days. Stocks, big, large, high-tech stocks, stocks, you know, were literally pumping and dumping just like worse Ponzi schemes and shitcoins. Uh, Spotify, <laughs> insane, and insane, insane movements. Facebook meta, insane movements, cats down, you know, crazy. There is a lot going on, right? So I'll do my best to actually get you guys some proper consideration, something to perhaps help you out, uh, well, to understand where we are in terms of uh, in terms of Bitcoin, how important this can actually just be to get the proper support from the stock side and from the stock industry. So we're going to dedicate it mainly to stock and Bitcoins, okay? Uh, to Bitcoins and stocks uh, to, well, I'll, I'll do my best to perhaps cover one or two free questions. And there are some points that I also mentioned, uh, well, got, got referred to answer to, to uh, assess some sort of like exclusive requests from our people in the, next, in the exclusiveness club. So I'm going to have it a look as well and try to answer some questions of these. And welcoming everybody from St. Petersburg, Florida, Florida, um, Dubai, Germany, Washington, D.C., capital of USA, Canada, Bosnia. Uh, Australia, all you guys, much loves, and I think I think if you are ready, let's just give it a a proper look. Uh, well, because like it or not, just like I said, we have been watching pretty wild price action, and this has been oh, this has been pretty crazy. This has been pretty crazy. We're talking about well, this is a quick overview, right? What was going on recently? We are looking at a chart of well, gold, uh, Goldman Sachs Commodity, Commodity Index (GSCY). Right here in the yellow, we're looking at actually, uh, well, the, the interest rates, 10 year uh, treasury note uh, yields here around 0 0.1, 0 0.92. Uh, okay, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, at the same time, of course, you know, the bond future futures price is actually just going south along with it because of its negative correlation to the interest rates. So, knowing, knowing of that, a bit of, you know, um, I should say perhaps like context, you know, for well, we are uh, on the equity side. Uh, sorry, on the on the commodity side, we are also looking at the act at uh, the uh, at the section of the special section of commodities. I always pay a lot of attention to commodities, mainly in the form of the Bloomer Commodity Index (BCOM), right? And we're looking at BCOM futures prices, uh, futures prices, futures points. No matter how we refer to it, the uh, uh, the most I should say, uh, well. 
if you believe that this strength of commodities is arguable, right, then I think there is not much to really argue, right? Ever since actually a last year breakout, last year's breakout happened and occurred literally a year ago in February. A February monthly close got us above 50 month average, 50 month average, okay? A couple of years of average uh, results, performance for commodities as a whole got for the first time accelerated, you know, heavily over 50 month moving average. So this, ever since, you know, we were looking at, you know, commodities ripening and ripping all the way left to the to the right bottom, to the top. Uh, and well, why am I mentioning stocks, right? While I, was, while I said, you know, we would mainly discuss commodity, uh, we would mainly discuss stocks uh, and Bitcoin, right? Commodities, stocks, Bitcoin, real estate, interest rates, all of these markets are connected. They are glued together, right? We may like it or not, just like every country would have some sort of like neighbors out there. We are we are doomed to see a keep observing certain correlations in the markets. And I think this is this is very important to notice uh, and to know that each and every single market is has some sort of like you know stronger or weaker correlation. Okay. Uh, well, and it is dynamic thing. Right, it doesn't really. It does always change. Like it is dynamic. Once set, it is not set in stone. Once set, it can actually evolve, especially in the face of some unpredictable or unpredicted news, cataclysms, uh, catastrophes, war escalations, military conflicts, uh, hurricanes. You know, literally destroying all the crops, something like that. That you cannot really predict with the help of technical analysis, with the help of fundamental analysis, any sort of analysis out there. Right. This may well change and enhance or weaken the actual correlation and all that said kind of like getting a tiny bit of uh well of this um of this overall outlook right we were looking at stocks uh well kind of like mainly in the form of two two averages right we're looking at s p 500 right spx the large copy index and we're looking at uh, composite Nasdaq composite index. Okay, so what what are we looking at? Well, was the recent kind of like crash? It was a crash, literally large one, right? Coming off of well, 16,000 16, down to almost thirteen thousand. Okay, per the per thirteen thousand points. So it was pretty massive, massive decline on the com on the com composite side, right? So tech composites, you know, were getting really a lot of bloodbath, but then. Right, S and P five hundred was actually showing, you know, also very heavy decline from forty seven fifty down to well, uh, forty two fifty approximately area. Right, followed both followed by this strong upside pullback. Okay, oriented to test and give it a test, a proper test to, uh, well, the mean reversion setup. So you can call it, you can actually approve uh, that the short term mean reversion, short term mean reversion. Uh, the upside pullback towards the 50 week, uh, sorry, 50, uh, 50 day moving averages, okay, are actually somewhat complete, at least on some shorter term periods, right? By looking at S&P 500, just like I said, you are basically looking at a heavy decline followed by a heavy upside, you know, buyback uh, with local rejection. There's some sort of like, a, well, something that you could call perhaps an evening star formation, Evening star, evening star can inflammation is not necessarily the most bearish, sorry, the most bullish looking candlestick formation, candlestick pattern. Uh, it is usually kind of like, you know, you have a one large candle, right? Gap up. Then you have, uh, well, some sort of like, you know, tiny, tiny, you know, thing of a spinning top, for example, right? So large, large, uh, large candle, spinning top uh, and gap down as well. So you have two gaps out there. And this is exactly what happened locally in here, right? So there was a clear local overthrow, kind of like overshoot and rejection, uh, followed by quite a heavy sell-off, right? It is inarguable. I think that the red one uh, kind of like, you know, just helped, or I should say, to stop the market enough on the short-term basis to deteriorate it, give it a bit some of ease, right? We are somewhere in the middle area for the RSI for, for the, uh, well, 14 uh, 14 past days on average, 47 points, 42 points on the composite index, right? So it tells you clearly that it is basically, well, knowing that this is a weekly chart, uh, 
weekly chart, you know, is is, is still heavily uh, heavily over oversold. Well, when compared with uh, when compared with what happened, what was actually you know about, about like seventy points, uh, roughly a couple of weeks before that happened, right? So what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, well, we were looking at some heavy heavy uh, price action going on, right? That stack. As we as we said, you know, were was receiving basically a lot of bloodbath, a lot of blood, right? This was the earning announcement season. The earning reportings were actually coming out for all the major, uh, well, stock, uh, well, shares, and you were looking at severe crashes, right? Here's a correlation of, for example, Netflix against uh, S and P five hundred, understood as an the relative strength, right? So the comparison, the actual ratio of a Netflix as a stock share uh, when compared with the benchmark of S&P 500, SPX, large cap index. And you got to see, right, what happened. Oh, there, come on, some emojis actually turned on. We don't want the emojis. Um, and like I said, this entire part, right, this entire slash is what brought us this insane, uh, well, frankly speaking, one of the largest gaps I've seen in the while. I've seen in a while uh, for the stocks, right? We are talking about the gap down uh, in a single day, in a single day on such an insane self, right? Uh, coming for number of, uh, number of, well, a very highly positioned stocks, right? Uh, and we are talking about gap that is basically about 20% down, 15, 20% down for large cap, you know, uh, regulated markets stock equities this is quite significant right you don't really see that too often so we had actual gap from 500 approximately 500 dollars per, per share you know down to uh well 400 approximately uh well an eight 410 one way or another right this is still 90 hundred points down the scale it's heavy heavy decline out there and we are talking about similar case Okay, about a very similar case going on for, uh, well, for Facebook, for Meta, which actually, you know, declined, I think, oh, it is a heavy decline, right? We're talking about 30, uh, 3 to 2, 3 to 2, uh, you know, points on the scale. They're down to basically what is right now, th uh, 2, 3, 4, okay? So 234 out of 322 it is quite a heavy decline. And that is also the correlation as in the ratio relative strength of Facebook, okay? As, a, as the share uh, listed against, um, ranked against S&P 500. So you can tell there is a crash. There is a proper crash. During the recent crashes on the equity side where just like I'm saying, you know, all of his biggest declines in a single day, you know, were happening. This had been followed, this actually, you know, had been, I should say, uh, you know, lead, led to an extent by extremely oversold equity indicators. You were seeing and you were observing the, uh, well, let's call it, let's call it breadth indicators uh, as in new 52 week, no 52 week highs versus new 52 week lows, which is basically yearly high, new yearly high, new yearly low uh, at very low levels hit very low levels, which means that there was an overwhelming uh, advantage taken on the, um, well, on the losing side of the market. It means that most of the market was actually uh, going and breaching the levels unseen a year, like for the entire year before, right? So 50, new 52-week lows were heavily, uh, well, heavily, you know, practically overwhelming, you know, the the amount when compared with uh, with new 52-week new 52 highs so this comparison told you that the entire market was so weak the entire market on the equity side was as weak as it was not even during COVID crash march 2020 which is already a huge point but it was as bad as it actually got during that great financial recession <laughs> okay so uh we're talking about 2008 so a lot of equity indicators were actually reset back to the levels unseen since 2008 okay i wanted to resonate with you for a moment so please try to try to kind of like get it uh, somehow you know in um in your 
<laughs> in mind to kind of like, you know, let you resolve it. And this volatility was especially, you know, backed, um, you know, somewhere back in ahead of the investors, okay, uh, by the fears, by the fears uh, stimulated and, uh, well, brought by the Fed, right? The, brought, um, brought by the Fed on the deflationary side, right? So the Fed had announced that they would be hiking the rates, right? At least three times, most likely in 2022. This is this, you know, this had been their announcement, of course, of, ahead of the heavy crashes, ahead of the heavy crashes, which funnily enough, you know, many Congress people, many traders, my, my good friend, Unusual Wales, recently actually just popped up and brought, you know, this, this funny summary of 2020. One, I think, summary and, and you know, comparison of uh, trading performance of Congress people, Congress of people, well, politicians. I think this is still kind of like similar to the overall, it's not only Congress people in the States. I think it's a global thing that politicians, a lot of politicians are insiders. They are who regulate the market. They are who propose certain regulations. And they are who propose, you know, certain solutions on the... Uh, governing side, which means they possess, they're in the position of insider information, which basically kind of like prohibits you, you know, against from trading. When you are in possession of the insider information, you're basically not allowed to use it uh, well out there, not even to mention, needless to say, if you're a politician and you're a governing, you know, party out there. So, uh, it was funny to observe, you know, S and P five hundred, you know, getting. Uh, I can't recall if it was, you know, t um, somewhere between ten and twelve percent. I think it is typical average, uh, annualized ten ten year average kind of like you know, performance of S and P five hundred just for a benchmark. And you are seeing, you know, uh, Congress people with Nancy Pelosi somewhere in the top five, I think, uh, actually beating the benchmark like numbers of X's, multiples. Okay, so long story short, the Congress people, the politicians are the best traders alive. They are outperforming each and every single hedge fund out there. They're outperforming each and every single person, basically, uh, based on the records, right? So this is uh, this is pretty funny to watch. But guess what? If you are in the position of inside inf of inside information, right? You can and, and you can illegally, but still trade on that and make profits. Then you could perhaps get it just the way that Nancy Pelosi did. And loaded heavily call options, you know, long she went long on mad long on the call options for Google, okay. Which, well, three four weeks later after she did that, you know, was actually virtually 20 30 percent down. And well, stocks are somewhat back up, right? So, we are talking about we're talking about pretty pretty interesting environment, but at times it makes you think, right? At times it kind of like forces you to think whether or not uh, or whom we are trading against, to be honest. And this implies, you know, uh, well, the overall, I should say this combined with the overall threat of the interest rate hikes, uh, which in the January FOMC meeting was actually given, you know, little to no answer whatsoever about their actual plans, about the numbers, about their actual strategy and how to, how to get that done, right? So... Uh, I think I don't know. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true, right? So, so uh, take it with a bit of salt. Take it with a pinch of salt. But uh, true or not, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised at all if what they are telling you about the interest rate hikes is either not coming at all, or it's coming in a way that uh, that eventually would cause even more inflation to come. As in, the markets would still keep pumping, right? The worst case, you just print more money. That's what they've been doing globally, uh, regardless of the countries, you know, for years and for decades. And, uh, well, why am I even bringing all these points, right? Well, I'm bringing all these points because there's been insanely strong correlation between, uh, well, between gold, between S&P 500, okay, between dollar and Bitcoin. Of course, each and every single market would have different set of correlations, uh, different set of I should say, sensitivity to the indications of one another, right? But Bitcoin has been very strongly correlated negatively against gold, 
which is negatively correlated usually uh, against S&P 500, right? As a risk off risk on environment. So whenever there is a risk off environment, gold has been taken, uh, well, an appreciation side, right? While the stocks were crashing. So gold instead of dollar itself, you know, the gold was much more preferred in terms of the security of your holding. So it was a safe haven run uh, in terms of security of your capital, okay? And this was negatively correlated to the S&P 500. So whenever S&P 500 kind of like declined, gold appreciated. And here you can clearly tell there has been, there had been recently, you know, nothing but for the past weeks, uh, ever since the peak, you know, of $69,000 coming up with the, uh, funnily enough, Evergrande news, you know, to the single day, hour level pip, whatever you named it. The market peaked on the equity side, on Bitcoin side, dollar, dollar uh, gold peaked for a moment too, right? But ever since, you can tell there is a clean shift, right? Peak happened in tandem for gold and Bitcoin, but ever since we were observing, you know, the, uh, well, inverse negative correlation, right? Some people say inverse is more of a negative correlation. It's a, like negative minus correlation when one just moves in the, in the other direction than uh, the, the other one, okay? So what does that mean, right? Every time that gold pumped, Bitcoin declined for the same reason that I mentioned before, right? And the other way around. Now the Bitcoin is pumping. We are looking at some sort of, you know, local, I should say, uh, well, series of declines followed by local local tiny pullback to the upside right to the gold uh, on the gold side but bitcoin well is finally is finally given like i said this uh sort of like benefit of doubt in terms of the rates hikes right some people say it's just you know fugazi like that they are literally not 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 only not going to hike the rates but they're also going to print even more money and uh well and keep the <laughs> keep the you know Keep this vehicle going even deeper uh, than the rabbit hole, which eventually would bring nothing but worse complications and implications. And uh, well, Bitcoin for to grow needs risk on environment. Some people say, professionals say that Bitcoin is a um, how we call that is a kind of like a barometer for the risk appetite. Okay, so if you're risk on you know, approach uh, with the with, with this approach on the risk on side, right? You're willing to take the risk. You're not really willing to protect the capital, but you're willing more to take the risk, okay? And you're on the risk on side, okay? Then it shows you that your risk appetite actually increases. You can you can tolerate more risks and you're more eager and prone to take an open, an open set of speculative positions. And this is what usually provides a stable, or I should say even more or less explosive growth for Bitcoin, okay? So uh, it means that as long as this correlation between gold and Bitcoin is maintained uh, to, you know, to a larger, uh, you know, more or less the same uh, extent, it doesn't really reverse immediately, like all of a sudden, suddenly, but instead it's some sort of like maintained, you would observe Bitcoin being strongly glued to whatever S&P 500 uh, does right and we are back back at the charts that we had already discussed right so i i i keep bringing those charts you know the equities for uh, nasdaq composites for s p 500 to let you guys know that that is there is a very strong correlation between these markets between these indices okay the risk on environment generated or given by these on the benefit of doubt and bitcoin right so bitcoin needs risk on environment bitcoin needs this doubt for uh, whether or not, you know, they're literally going to hike the rates or not at all, right? And there was a gossip, again, rumor. I have no idea if it's true or confirmed. Um, it's, uh, but what I saw, you know, is that there was an actual, I think, European, ECB, European Central Bank, that there would be no plans whatsoever to hike rates, right? You see a lot of, you know, you see a lot of countries actually, you know, getting, uh, the pandemic officially ended with uh, with taking down the restrictions, all the limitations and everything, which, well, further further along the way should be also supportive for the growth environment for the equities, for stocks, for companies, and for crypto as well, right? So uh, please.
please let me know very quick uh, if you guys can hear me still fine. Um, I need you guys to keep me posted. Uh, if anything is basically uh, kind of like detaching, you know, I'm getting my uh, I'm getting my microphone set up out here. Uh, so please let me know. Keep me posted and uh, let's give it a quick check. Let's give it a quick check. I'm just going to um, okay. Fabucina saying all fine. Good to see you. Thank you so much for letting me know. Got a sip of coffee and I think we can go. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go. Let's give it a check for what is happening on the Bitcoin side. Okay. So what we are looking on, what we are looking at is, uh, well, something that I had pointed out recently, you know, uh, on how much similarity, or I should say, reset Bitcoin trend ever since the peak in November 2021 had had until now, right? So we're talking about the levels basically unseen, unseen, not even since the last last years. Um, well, I should say uh, June, you know, quarter quarter free bottoming process. We were we are more oversold at forty thousand dollars right now per the indicators than we were at thirty thousand dollars, right? So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that historically speaking, ever since this bull market started, and many people would say, okay, uh, well, why you you see a lot of a lot of oversold indications here here. Right. A long story short, guys, this this was this is true, but this was regarding you know the bear market of 2018. When you have a switch in the in the overall trajectory for the market, the primary market switches from back to bull and bear to back and um, bear to bull in 2018 December or bull to bear. Right. This kind of like changes when it's the bear market. You see more often you know kind of like momentum being you know. Uh, consolidated in the lower half on, on the scale below 50 points when it's a proper very strong high momentum movement you often see this tend to go you know in the upper half right when it's sort of like sideways you can which is which it had been for the entire year so far uh ever since well last year right origins you would have this kind of like swinging back and forth between the boundaries given and represented as well reflected by the price action swinging back and forth between the range boundaries okay so this is kind of like typical when it's a ranging market you see market bouncing back and forth aggressively and more volat you know with more volatility between the proper extremes when it's full of momentum and a very strong upwards pressure you see this momentum and trend being mainly all showing all oscillators being located in the upper half of on the on, on the set and all the lower half is dedicated to the bear market Right? So we are talking about the bull market, which started basically with the flooring process, with the very floor uh, of 2018. Okay, December 2018 is where you saw the Bitcoin bottom at 3120. 3120, three thousand dollars. Okay, three thousand uh, dollars, and you know, followed the the very bottom, followed by three four month kind of like sideways period of sideways reversal pattern back then. You know, some sort of like an ascending triangle, if you will. Uh, well, how relevant is that? That we're looking at the market that is as oversold as it was not even during, you know, like I said, uh, well, last year's bottoming process, but we're looking at the levels uh, in the oversold trend and reset momentum unseen, well, since what was basically, uh, well, the bottom of, I think, six, seven thousand dollars Of course, well, so of course, there was uh, like entire market nicely followed by addition upside pullback, the new push, new highs made, okay, followed by, well, something that you could not really predict with the charts, which was uh, basically a COVID crash, right? COVID crash as a black swan event is something that you, by definition, cannot really predict with charts uh, because how on earth could you know based on reading Bitcoin chart when the new pandemic is coming or when an asteroid crashes into Earth and we all fucking die? You never know that, right? So at times you get these price shocks. And uh, but because you ha you have actually well the, the, the you know thin curve represents 50 week moving average. This tells you that the impact of the COVID basically did not stop the average growth of the long term. So Bitcoin technically in the long term direction it did not change a tiny bit anything, right? It didn't change a thing. 
uh, on the long-term trajectory. It was just a massive discount to get it. And, uh, well, to me, it's a very relevant point that we are as oversold as we were back in October 2019, uh, which was basically, well, the referential bottoming process, six, seven thousand dollars the most important levels, followed uh, or actually given, gifted with the crash of COVID, the pandemic black swan, right, which is some somehow you need to sort of like exclude that because you cannot give, in, give that, you know, uh, the, the credit to the charts with it. And... $3,000. So we get the feedback information that Bitcoin is as oversold uh, as it was basically at $6,000 levels, six $7,000 levels, and $3,000 levels. Okay, so it is pretty wild if you think about it, right? Many people would call that bear market what we're looking at right now, right? But uh, I'm going to repeat myself, but I don't want to like dedicate too much time to it. Uh, all over again, bull market is a sequence, is a proper upward strength, sequence of higher highs and higher lows, okay? Upwards trajectory, lower highs, lower lows sequence on the price action side, this is this is what you call a bear market. Well, what are we looking at here? Can you really call that an upward trend or a downward trend? Does it really make sequence of higher highs, higher lows or lower highs, lower lows? Well, let's have a look, right? You have a high 65,000 lows, approximately 28,069. So you have a higher high, right? And you have a higher low. So if anything at all, right? Assuming this is the bottom, you never know, but assuming this is the bottom, unless, again, an asteroid crashes into Earth, Russia, Ukraine, military tensions like emerge or some other unpredicted stuff happens, unless something like that happens, it seems to be a very good bottom candidate because of how oversold and attractive the market is, how much uh, depreciated or discounted against its long-term moving average it is, Similarly to what it was here during the COVID crash and during what it was actually during the uh, reversal bottom pattern of 2018 depression. So to me, it looks like a good bottom candidate, right? It looks attractive. And if anything, well, I definitely would not dare call it a bear market because it's not a sequence of lower highs and lower, high and lower lows. And if anything at all, I would, well, I would call that mainly the, not, uh, well, um, sideways mainly. This is the sideways, right? This is the like low momentum movement to the, to the, to the horizontal direction. But if anything, you have a high, you have a low, you have a higher high and higher low for now. So if anything at all, you have a clean upward sequence, right? You have a clean upward trend. So, so sorry to uh, perma burst, but this is not the bear market. To give it a proper check to shorter time frames, what I want you guys to fill you in on uh, is, well, something that I basically would refer to as the most important breakout attempt uh, ever since the correction started. We are looking, this is a 12-hour chart applied with the Burbicator Pro, so, which is the complete trading system set of indicators that I personally use for my trading, which basically acknowledge the correction early November right, early November, summer, mid-November, uh, with the break beneath $63,000, right? This is what the projection, uh, well, well for, the, for the reversal actually was, was given, okay? And ever since breaking through the floor, breaking below the support, you actually got the official retracement corrective wave started, right? And you can have a look and you can have a proper understanding that we had had several attempts to break through, to break above and invalidate the correction. So, Technically speaking, like leaving, leaving the, well, you can clearly tell that the biggest market kind of like shock, you know, was actually coming, I think, December 4th, when it was the previous FOMC meeting, uh, to the best of my memory, right, when the proper rate hikes policy was uh, announced to be followed in the months ahead, the months following. So far, nothing happened, nothing's happened out of it. But uh, this is the first shock that Bitcoin and the risk on assets stocks got. Okay, so ever since, again, uh, we had had several failed attempts to break through something that is called a CTF trailer. CTF trailer, which stands for current time frame trailer. This shows you the dynamic support and resistance, depending on what kind of like trend mode it is that, that actually belongs to, right? And for the first time ever, for the first time ever, every time the new 
uh, the well, the new lows are made. You know, the indicator kind of like shows you that well clear direction that the new trend actually appears. And after having had several attempts to break but failed because we actually breached the resistance but we never closed above it. We actually closed beneath, below, right? This is the proper first time right now that you know Bitcoin and you can tell that Bitcoin is literally right now live trying and attempting a proper break, right, breakout for the first time on a quite a powerful movement with some sort of like heavily oversold market conditions with uh, more of risk on ease on the stock market with potential threats of rate hikes, you know, being to some extent not even true, right? This overall builds some sort of like a bottoming setup. And like I say, you know, you can never predict when Elon Musk tweets, for example, right? You can never predict when Elon Musk tweets about Dodge or Bitcoin, Jenna jokes, you know, he provides the jokes, he comes up with a joke, right? And for example, market crashes or pumps. You cannot know that with the charts. You cannot know that when there is a military conflict expansion, right, of emergency. You cannot know also when uh, when some natural catastrophes occur, hurricanes, you know, etc. Uh, so knowing of that, knowing of that, we have to remain uh, with limited reliability. You know, if, uh, we need to remember of limited reliability uh, with regards to the charts. So assuming the charts are giving you a complete story right now, as in no additional unpredictable news is actually coming up to the market, then you can clearly tell, right, the minute after minute, Bitcoin is trying and on a very powerful move, about 5% movement to the upside, if I'm not mistaken, or even stronger. You're looking at, well, Bitcoin, giving you a chance of a breakout for the first time well ever since basically this attempt which was uh end of a year ahead of the end of a year in the early december so it hadn't happened really a lot but it's yet another attempt and it looks so far to be the strongest one and if we see a proper mid daily close proper mid daily close which happens well in about five hours right the moment you see a strong daily close, such a candle is a very good candidate. A close breaching, uh, like breaching this level, current front trailer, giving you a close above it. The higher, the better. Now, uh, this confirms the reversal. This is the reversal confirmation for Bitcoin's three month lasting uh, correction. So, to me, guys, I don't know about you, but to me, it's a proper huge signal, right? Of course, five hours still. A lot can change, a lot news, a lot of news pieces can come out within this time. Usually you see a lot of volatility uh, before the day the session closes. So uh, take it with a grain of salt, take it with a pinch of salt just yet, but keep your eyes open. The moment you see a proper daily close, mid daily close and daily close above 40365, 40365, which is this very level, current different trailer, trailer level, this confirms the first successful breach through the main long-term resistance, defining the three-month-long correction that took us 50% to the downside. And uh, perhaps it's early, right? But you remember, I never gave up on my $100,000 all-time highs. I never gave up on my $10,000, $20,000 Ethereum all-time highs. I never gave up on my $1,000 Litecoin, right? Although, of course, I was, I was right. I was wrong about the timing. I cannot predict the time. I have no fucking idea when Bitcoin is going to trade in the next five minutes, next five hours, right? Or in the next five years, five days, and five hours and five minutes from now. Because it's nothing but a guess, right? But if you observe the trends, then you can know that the significance of such a breakout, right? Of such a breakout that we're looking at right now can actually get you a long-term implications. And long-term implications that can take you well, potentially to new time highs on Bitcoin as well, right? It's early to say because you barely are looking at somewhat of a, well, uh, what is it, 13, 15%, you know, kind of like 17% of a bounce off of the lows. But it's still better than never. And there is a chance, like I said, that provided that nothing unpredictable happens, nothing like bad that you cannot predict with the charts happens, then Bitcoin is a good candidate for the new time high, in my opinion, after it finally closes above the current time trailer. 
So it seems to be marking, you know, all those points out there. Litecoin, very quick point about Litecoin, because I assume many people would ask about that. Uh, my long-term view did not change still, right? I, I have my kind of like, you know, stop loss set to uh, to get it to down 2% of my uh, equity portfolio. I never invest uh, too much in a single position, right? I, I like with all the bullishness that I have got for Litecoin, uh, it is still moving sideways, right? We, we, we're still moving kind of like in a large rectangle, no matter how you like it or not. Uh, it's trending on some short term underlying time frames, but it's still moving sideways over the last year, just like Bitcoin has done so far, right? So in case Bitcoin pumps heavily through new all time highs, Litecoin is also a good candidate, you know, to give you some series of upside ascending candles uh, while sequencing. The momentum is heavily oversold, of course, and this is a long-term momentum too, right? This is a long-term chart. Uh, and well, because, because of course, well, this, this local triangle actually got broken down the leaf, uh, so it should be, of course, updated. But uh, the most important part is that we are still moving within certain boundaries. We are still moving within certain rec uh, rectangle box, right? We're looking at the levels that, well, got the lows breached, but they every single week closed above the breached lows, above the breached support. So you have a proper, so, well, definition of a swing failure, of a failed breakup, right? You have a, you have a support, you have a breach, but the, there is an immediate demand influx, which actually manages to climb back above the broken support, which actually adds another a level, another, another uh, confirmation to the strength of the support. So in case you see Bitcoin's bullishness for the next weeks, Okay, you see Litecoin, in my opinion, following up too. Of course, like I said, I still have not given up on my thoughts on Litecoin, Ethereum. I still think it's going to happen along with $100,000 Bitcoin. It just takes longer, right? Like it or not, uh, I personally hate it. I'm a very impatient person. So so I, I would definitely want to, you know, see all the pumps coming sooner than later. But at times, at times, you just need to be patient. At times, the market doesn't pump as fast as you want it. At times, Litecoin or Ethereum or Bitcoin doesn't reach your dream destinations uh, in the next five minutes since you start imagining that, right? But it doesn't mean it's never going to happen. So all that's, all that's uh, well, all that said, all that said, uh, <laughs> there's a funny thing. Uh, Bert meets all his targets in 2021. And begging off 2022, now his thoughts are right. Uh, that's that's funny, uh, because if you were there in 2008, sorry, in 2021, for the entirety, basically all the way, I think to 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 October, since the like until the Evergrande peak, which I hadn't predicted, then you would basically know that, you know, all the reversals were actually coming in. Uh, with with decent predictions, but that's that's another story, right? I don't care to explain that. Uh, everything is out there to be checked at any time for you guys. It's it's transparent. I don't delete my tweets. You can go and check rights or wrongs and come up with your own conclusions. So uh, there is a yeah. Thomas saying Thomas Mitra saying digital renaissance. Yeah, um, this is. This is a new amazing partnership. You're working with a project I like a lot. I'm very happy for you. Very happy to see you on board. Likewise, I'm happy. And uh, well, we have officially uh, we have officially welcomed Digital Renaissance. Uh, NFTs are getting on fire. I think this is an amazing, an amazing opportunity that we can all create and all kind of like benefit from it as the community. Uh, and we are going to do our best as the community, as the com as the company, as the Burp Nest to actually get. Uh, well, help this this from getting the right direction. So uh, I'm going to also very quick check through the questions that some of our people wanted to get answered. Let me have a very quick look inside. Okay, we are going to 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 uh, checking that as we speak. Okay, let's. Um, Give it a go. So like I said, in five, six hours, we'll be hosting webinar. Uh, please talk about two scenarios, bottom 30K and new highs 2022 and $50,000 as resistance, which could lead us 
uh, to no more continuation. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but yeah, I think I covered, you know, the fact that we are as oversold as we were at $30,000 and $6,000 at five um, at $3,000. Uh, so we are way more oversold. We're may, way more, uh, we're having way more upside potential right now, so more room for, for this and space for the growth to the upside than we were at $30,000 a year ago, right? So I kind of like covered that. Uh, and of course, unless unpredictable news happens, right, then I think there is a chance for you to get, uh, well, to get to see Bitcoin actually, you know, just pumping, right? If you see some crash, like like I said, some unpredictable news happening, then it easily may crash, right? If, if an SRA crashes into Earth and we all die, then I promise Bitcoin is not going to be trading at $40,000 anymore. So, but assuming nothing like that happens, you know, it does seem make uh, to make a lot of sense to expect new highs in 2022, just like I said. Uh, and if that happens, if we break above $40,000, which is Bitcoin testing at this very moment, then there are very high chances we are actually going to get, we're actually going to get a $50,000 as the next point. Okay. Can we have a look at gold and silver charts? High time frame, no crypto, but still conversion to hedge. Very good point for my friend, Banana King. Uh, this is a person whom I truly have been happy for, to, uh, well, observing his growth within the nest. I'm super excited. He's actually talking about, uh, well, hedging here. I think this is very important, very major decision. So let's have a look, especially for you, buddy, gold and silver charts. Let's give it a check. Let's give it a check. Uh, well, gold, uh, this is, this is Facebook. Let's actually give it a check to here. Um, this is gold long-term chart monthly. I think monthly is a long-term. So let's, let's focus on the monthly. Well, the way I look at it, right, we are, we are looking at the long-term growth that is not stopping, of course, on any sort of like long -term. 200 month averages, 50 month averages, long term growth is nowhere near stopped. You can tell there has been some consolidating movement going on defined by the range, range extremes. Okay, given it, uh, well, slightly over $2,000 per ounce and $1,600, $1,600 uh, per ounce, right? Bottom, top to the bottom. And we've been moving between those boundaries, right? In some form of uh well declining what not even a wedge just some sort of like a descending channel if you will right there were a number of of failed breakouts to the upside but uh well commodities gold and silver especially because gold and silver are what uh what is the main part for example of the B bloomberg commodity index and overall like metals precious metals are a very strong part and very big factor of the weight to uh to the commodity indices so whatever happens uh, on the gold and silver side, you know, it brings a lot of weight uh, to the overall happenings of, um, of the overall commodity sector, right? So long-term gold, uh, long gold chart, to, in my opinion, is super bullish, right? It's super bullish. I, you, know, you know very well, I keep accumulating gold. I keep, I keep accumulating silver. I'm a huge fan of both. I think they're both extremely oversold. Over the longer period of time, you can tell a lot of technicals are going good. You can tell BCOM, like I had, you know, already shown, uh, is, is literally looking insanely strong after breaking a through 50-month average for the first time. After 10 years, I think, uh, and that happened last year in, in February. So it is, I'm a huge fan of gold, a huge fan of gold. Weekly chart is looking very strong as well. It's Right now, it's hovering, you know, summer, swinging back. And fourth in a form of a sideways with number of failed breakouts funnily enough anytime that gold was getting strong you know you would get you would be getting fed coming up with some sort of unpredicted announcement or something that would just tackle down the price of gold so it is funny to observe that um coincidence is it or is it not uh if you go and have a look, right? Because, oh, just, just for the f final conclusion, sideways, locally sideways, part of a bigger, larger sideways. Uh, the main levels, you can tell defined by the by the volume uh, are kind of like given in here, point of control. And the volume spikes, you know, kind of like I've given in here. So this is what we're, gold, you know, has been trending, right? Has been trading inside or between those volume spikes, moving sideways. Any bigger breakout that may happen, in my opinion, eventually would happen 
right? Uh, well, this is the, the actual the most upda updated trend line to the downside, uh, showing the suppression, the bearish, the supplier side, the seller side. If you see a proper close above these levels, perhaps a breakout on the price action base level, perhaps even safer if it gives you the breakout above the highs of October 21, okay, 1875. Close above it weekly or monthly, even better than I think high chances we are going to see some further upside continuation. But note that gold itself has much more hedging potential, as in capital preservation, protection of your portfolio, protection against volatility to your portfolio, to your holdings, rather than investment itself. If it comes down to investment, I'm so much bigger fan of silver, right? Although you, you, you wouldn't like rush to uh, draw immediate conclusions that silver is immediately bullish or something like that, because for the past year and a half, it has been staying basically flat. But guys, like, don't let it deceive you. For the first time, like recently, I think it was, when was that? Uh, July last year when it happened, we were looking at the bullish monthly crossover, 50-month 50, uh, 50 moving average crossing over 200-month moving average for the first time in, well, ever since 2004. So we are talking about 17, 18 years of price action that would not bring you this bullish market signal. And the last time it happened, right, silver was trading in this local, some, some sort of like, you know, ascending triangle, if you will, some consolidation. And this is what happened later, the entire proper bull market. Uh, it takes years, right? It's, it's much less, I should say, volatile. It's, it takes so much more time. It requires so much more patience. But just like Litecoin, right, there's a, re there's a reason why people call Bitcoin digital gold. And there's a reason also why people call Litecoin a digital silver. It rarely ever pumps, right? It's not like just any other trend, trending market that you would get heavy, you know, upsloping movement, right, just in one direction. It's most, time, most of the time you get sideways and then it immediately shoots up. But when it shoots up, it's already too late to catch up because it appreciates so much in value that it can never catch it, right? So the way I look at it, very simple, right? You have a lot of, uh, you had, you had had seven year long accumulation after peaking in 2011. You would go sideways from 2013. Basically, even there was a breakout of a symmetrical triangle or descending triangle, no matter how we call that. Uh, the, the sideways processing, you know, of the depression and the final unpredictable COVID crash, you know, they're breaching beneath with amazing buying opportunity, right? Uh, we are looking at the reaccumulation. Long term chart is showing you the breakout. So break a retest, basically. The break a retest of long-term accumulation. So to me, it's freaking bullish, right? So if I was to expect anything like that with soaring inflation, uh, so much money being imprinted, commodities going through the roof over the next years, especially they're doing pretty well in slowing down inflation environment, highly inflated market and slowing down inflation, some deflationary hikes. Uh, commodities would do best. So I'm a huge fan of gold and commodities as a whole. Gold and silver, I think this is this is pretty pretty cool concept. So good job on that. Uh, I think. Uh, 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 uh. Mm, 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 mm. Let me check if there is any other particular point to mention at this very moment before we wrap up the show. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I think those are all the questions. So let me. Let me take very quick questions from you guys, perhaps one or two questions. Let's see. Okay. Uh, mm, 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 mm. How do you see alts in general near future depending on BDC behavior? If Bitcoin is bullish and it trends, especially over the new time high, so you see so much bullish news, you see so much bullish adoption in terms of metaverse, Nike, like Adidas, all those huge corporate companies are coming and loading their assets deeply and heavily you know, into metaverse, into crypto environment. So like it or not, in my opinion, it only this is a, it's a kind of like a waiting game, right? Preservation game at, in which altcoins have been taken ahead. Well, the entire market has been taken ahead as a, as a crypto side on the crypto side. And well, other markets <laughs> are been taking crypto, uh, crypto like losses, right? So we're talking about Netflix 50% down of the highs, Facebook, Amazon, like 20% dips all of a sudden. So we're talking about huge, biggest world cap companies 
dumping like shit coins and pumping like shit coins. Okay, this is not really a this is not really precedented case, in my opinion. So get proper risk on an environment. Uh, you know, get some military tensions uh, perhaps off of the charts, and uh, I see altcoins catching up with Bitcoin heavily in this early. Uh, when is the best to go long on Bitcoin? Very unconcrete question. I mean, thank you for the question. It's, it's very hard to give you a proper answer because it's a, it's a general question. And to do a general question, I can get you only a general answer. I say that it is best to go long on Bitcoin when a key resistance is being broken. To some people, it's going to be one minute chart. To others, like me, it's going to be 12 hour chart, which actually gives you right now the confirmation that if you see a close above 43.65, the current temperature trade, which I was discussing earlier today, it is actually going to get you guys a proper breakout for the first time and confirmation of reversal and perhaps potentially good case to go long. Um, I think, guys, uh, very quick, very quick, um, just glancing literally through the chat. Do, 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 do. Somebody saying this is the burb market. My good, good point. Uh, good, good, good friend. IT tech, good guys. Those are, we have you. Know, we have a lot of good guys in Poland. I'm surprised with that because Poland crypto is not really, you know, is not really large community in Poland. I think many people are going, you know, out of the country because of high taxes. But apparently, there are still many talents out there. Good, good job. Mm. Okay. Okay. Listen, I think there has uh, there's been quite a lot mentioned already, and it's going to be good moment perhaps to pause for, uh, well, pause for now. And after having you, Nas Gang, having you all these all these updates about the stock markets, about the correlations, about gold, silver, how to look at it from the hedging perspective, from the speculation perspective, how Bitcoin serves as a speculation barometer and risk appetite barometer, to uh, well to show you the correlation negatively, uh, negative correlation with the gold as a safe haven asset to kind of like compensate uh, for the losses and for the volatility. Uh, I think we've discussed pretty a lot, in my opinion, unless, unless something unexpected or unexpected happens, as in, like I said, somebody invades, all of a sudden people will stop, the countries would stop dropping some nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs, um, Unless meteorite, like, like, you know, literally uh, asteroid crashes into Earth, unless we all fucking die and go extinct like dinosaurs did. So unless something like that happens, right, the charts tell you the bottom is in. The charts tell you the reversal is confirmed. Uh, with additional point, with additional strength noted and given when Bitcoin closes today in the next five, four hours, when Bitcoin closes through 4365, 40365, this is the most important levels, level in the chart and in my opinion today the moment you see a close above it for the first time in the three month period ever since the correction started this is a confirmation for the reversal and i couldn't be more excited i'll be watching the charts guys i hope you stay safe out there this is going to be pretty interesting days pretty interesting uh weeks to come and in my opinion the future is bright in my opinion the future is bright let's see what it gives uh, final reminder, guys, if you're watching that, if you enjoyed the webinar, make sure you smash the likes, hit the subscribe button as well, hit the not notification bells on so that you get tuned whenever our new con content pieces are coming out on a daily basis or a most daily basis. Uh, well, if you enjoyed that, make sure, guys, you also leave some kind comments. If you uh, have some questions, try to leave them as well in the chats on our YouTube. The bourbon is this is only our official YouTube, the only single account that we have on YouTube, the only official one. Uh, leave some kind comments, leave some questions, and I'll do my best to come back to you with answers. Hope you enjoy that, guys. Stay safe. God bless and enjoy. Bye-bye.